day that I've been waiting for all year is here. trigger inside of us as the hunting season approaches. As summer days become shorter and the morning breeze gets a little cooler, there is something that triggers us and says, it is time. So after shooting your bow all summer long, hanging stands and helping our herd reach its maximum potential, we prepare ourselves for that 10 seconds of glory that we all live for in the woods. must be Byron. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the very first time I have ever held a Kentucky hunting license that allows me to shoot a white-tailed deer. And to say I'm excited is an understatement. You know, one of the reasons why I've always wanted to come to Kentucky is because you can come so early. You can start hunting the 1st of September. And if you're lucky, you may be able to shoot a big white-tail in full velvet. Kentucky has always been known for its rich agriculture. With mild winters and longer growing seasons, you can find healthy crops all over the state. Mix that with the rolling hills and deep valleys and tons of water, you have the perfect recipe for growing big white-tailed deer. It's right up this trail. We're gonna stop here and walk in. There's a bed in there that's pretty close. I don't want to bump any deer. So we're fixing to go take a little time, look at some of these big heavy trails that are coming in to the Big and J and see exactly where we need to put a blind or where we need to hang some stands to get ready to start hunting. This is uh, one of the coverts that we've got set out, Byron has for us. Holy smokes, there's 747 pictures on here. Since, since last night. I'm gonna put a new card in. All right. That's ready to roll. Tell you what, let me take that to die for. We'll just freshen this spot up right here. This is a new product that uh, Big and Jay's got out to die for. The, uh, the name fits it. Put a little bit out right in, kind of freshen this spot up in case we need it. You know that I put a whole bag out last night and there's not the green left. They left that spot clean. A whole bag? A whole bag out last night and there's not any left. And this is the number two spot? This is the number two spot. Let's go look better. at the number one spot. <laughs> no. With Big and Jay, it's not a matter of if your deer will show up, it's simply a matter of when. Big and Jay Long Range Attractants. The aroma is super strong, the range is 
is super long. As seasons change and anticipation starts to rise, we get that small feeling of time drawing us closer to the beginning of fall. We do all the necessary steps to be successful when the time comes. There is just something that goes along with shooting a bow that gives you a calming feeling and something that draws us into that opening of bow season. The day that I've been waiting for all year is here. We're in Kentucky right now, early season. We're hunting with a good friend Byron. We sent up a bunch of Big and J up here earlier in the year and he's been putting it out. So we rolled in last night, got up this morning, went and uh, double checked all our spots and everything. Everything's looking good. So now we're gonna shoot our bow. We, um, we met up with Byron earlier and ate a little bit and kind of got the lay of the land and everything figured out. So we're gonna fire a few shots and we're gonna go hunting this afternoon. We got a perfect wind right here, right in our face. Our blind is straight in there. Deer bedding on the other side. Like I said earlier, we got two bucks in there that have been in full velvet and they just shed, so they just turned hard horn. A lot of times whenever they turn hard horn like that, they will change their pattern. So we want to hunt there first. Um, so we'll, I think our best chance to kill one of those deer are gonna be in the next two days. All right, let's head out. This is the day I've been waiting on all year. My first hunt, very first afternoon. This right here is just a just a typical early season setup. We got a little small food plot right here. Got some little winter wheat coming up. We've been feeding Big and Jay. Deadly dust right over that, just, just right on the other side, right there, the little food plot right here, about 25 yards. It's thick, you can see around here, it's just thick as all get out all the way around us. These bugs have been coming from the west right there. This is a pretty, pretty setup right here. Almost kind of like bear hunting in a way. I mean, when you see them, they're gonna be in range. The rest of it's gonna be up to me. With summer feeding patterns still in full swing, whitetails can be very predictable, and it wasn't long before deer started funneling into the small food plot. So the deer that we're hunting has been hanging out with a smaller eight point. So when this eight point stepped out, I knew that there was a really, really good chance that that big deer was gonna be with him. There he is right there, that's him. That's the big deer. Y'all, this is the deer that we come in here to shoot, but something isn't right. He has stepped into the exact spot that I need him to be, but he's on full alert and staring straight at me, and I'm trying to get drawn. Shoot with confidence. 
you with swagger. The bipod with moves. Y'all, this is the deer that we come in here to shoot. But something isn't right. He has stepped into the exact spot that I need him to be, but he's on full alert and staring straight at me, and I'm trying to get drawn. I just shot a big one right here, dark. He was cornered away real hard, but he come out with, I was expecting him to come out over here, and he come out to the right and walked over to the big and J and stood there quartered away. It sounded good, I couldn't tell for sure, but it sounded good, I heard that whack real hard. Sounded like it hit him in the offside shoulder, so got my fingers crossed. That was a good deer, real good deer. <laughs> ah. He's laying right there. <laughs> Jacob, are you kidding me? What? <laughs> oh, first day out here in Kentucky <laughs> with uh with my new buddy Byron. Jacob lined us up. Jacob's been out here before and hunted with Byron before. We come in here this afternoon and he said, uh, we, we, well, we checked the camera and there was this big nine point here and there was a, a big 10 coming in here. The nine was actually bigger than the 10. And um, I'd kind of gotten discouraged with the, uh, an eight point come in early. We, right there at dark, a, uh, another eight point stepped out. I mean, just right there in front of the blind. And I know I'm retelling everything that y'all just watched, but I'm so excited right now, I can't help it. And all of a sudden, this joker stepped out. Y'all, he walked over there and stood there, quartered away. And um, he was just acting spooky. I don't know what, I, I don't know if he heard me draw or what, but he was just acting spooky. And Jacob, he, uh, he leaned over in the camera, I don't know if y'all can hear it, but he said, can you slide one in there? And I, I've done it before. He was 27 yards. Look at the body on this thing, Jacob. Look at him, man. I am officially bucked out here in Kentucky, but I still hold a doe tag in my pocket. Byron has a place right over here real close that he feels like we can go and climb up and um, maybe shoot a doe this afternoon or so. I am just about out of hamburger meat and just about out of sausage, so it ain't gonna hurt my feelings to take two deer back home with me. So Byron has this spot pegged just like he did the other one. Deer are rolling in left and right. Right now I'm just waiting for one of these does to get broadside. And if they do, Holly, I'm bringing some more sausage meat to the house, baby. to get on one, then I'd get on another one, get on another one, they kept kind of running around. Finally, Jacob said, shoot the one on the right, and shot it right there. She run back toward the CRP right over there, and I just watched her go down in the CRP, so. So here's a scenario, y'all. I just shot a doe. She just run to the edge of the CRP and fell. Well, some more deer coming in. Well, Jacob, who's running the camera, also brought his bow. 
So we just reversed roles. He handed me the camera, he grabbed his bow, and here comes a doe walking in broadside. Every hunt is defined by a single moment. Don't let the moment define you. Experience perfection and make your next hunt an expedition. So here's a scenario, y'all. I just shot a doe. She just run to the edge of the CRP and fell. Well, some more deer coming in. Well, Jacob, who's running the camera, also brought his bow. So we just reversed roles. He handed me the camera, he grabbed his bow, and here comes a doe walking in broadside. Sounded good. I think we just doubled up. <laughs> that was pretty cool. Good my job. Whole, my whole hand holding you did pretty good. Good job. Jacob, Jacob. You see that? There's a buck coming right there. You see him coming? See? Yeah. See? So Jacob and I just filled both of our doe tags. So we're sitting there reminiscing enjoying the hunt, talking about what just happened, and I happen to turn around and look behind the stand, and a giant buck is walking right behind us. Dude, that was a nice buck. I only caught a glimpse of him, but he went in right here. I couldn't tell what he was, he was just a nice buck. I don't, I don't know where he went, I wish he would. See the white belly right there. Sausage meat, mama. I got the sausage meat. Ooh. Oh yeah. <laughs> Look at there. Big old Kentucky hammerhead right there. That's what I'm talking about. And these two does that Jacob and I just shot, well, they're going back to Mississippi and Michigan with us. We're gonna take them back. We're gonna process them. We're gonna make them into hamburger meat. We're gonna make them into smoked sausage. And for the rest of the year, my two daughters, my wife, and Jacob's wife are going to live off of this meat and enjoy it for the rest of the year. I am now ace number one cameraman. But what Jacob doesn't understand is he don't think I know what I'm doing up here, but I do. See, like, right now I got the camera pointed at me. I'm not even videoing him. Um, so I got him still in full control of everything that's going on here, uh, even though I'm running the camera. I don't even have to point it at him if I don't want to. Um, that's just kind of how I'm... <laughs> I'm tickling my own self right now. Y'all, I'm probably feeling right now about as bad for Jacob as Jacob is feeling for himself. And Jacob doesn't get to hunt as much as I do. Jacob spends more of his life behind the camera instead of in front of the camera. So when he does get in front of the camera, he does like to make good of it. 
The best thing you can do is pull your bootstraps up, go climb back in the stand, knock another arrow, and hope another big one walks out there broadside. Part of playing this game is the fact that sometimes you're going to lose. Hunting can be rewarding, but also a learning experience. The simple fact is, we get to spend time doing what we truly enjoy and with people we care about. Kentucky, it will always be one of our main stops when September comes around, and so we take full advantage of our given right to hunt.